Paracetam is a chemical that is made in a lab. In some countries in Europe it is used as a drug to improve memory and brain function. In the United States, some manufacturers sell paracetam as a dietary supplement. However, the United States Food and Drug Administration FDA, does not consider paracetam to be a legal dietary supplement. Paracetam is most commonly used for breath-holding attacks, seizure disorder, epilepsy, dizziness, vertigo, a learning disorder marked by difficulty reading, dyslexia, and a movement disorder often caused by antipsychotic drugs, tardive dyskinesia. It is also used for dementia, schizophrenia, sickle cell disease, and many other conditions, but there is no good scientific evidence to support many of these uses. How does it work? Paracetam is a chemical that is thought to help cells in the brain and blood vessels to function better. During aging and in some kinds of diseases, the membrane that surrounds cells starts to get stiff. Cells with a stiff membrane do not function as well. Some scientists think that paracetam helps maintain the membrane that surrounds cells so that they continue to function well. Dosing The following doses have been studied in scientific research. Adults by mouth. For surgery to improve blood flow to the heart, CAB surgery, paracetam 12 grams daily for 6 weeks, starting on day 6 after surgery. For seizure disorder, epilepsy, paracetam 9.6 to 24 grams daily for up to 18 months. For a movement disorder often caused by antipsychotic drugs, tardive dyskinesia, paracetam 2.4 grams twice daily for 4 weeks. For vertigo, paracetam 800 mg 3 times daily for 1 to 8 weeks. With a needle. For surgery to improve blood flow to the heart, CAB surgery, paracetam 12 grams administered by a healthcare professional as a single dose. Paracetam 12 grams, administered by a healthcare professional daily from the day before surgery to 6 days after surgery. For a movement disorder often caused by antipsychotic drugs, tardive dyskinesia, paracetam 8 to 24 grams daily administered by a healthcare professional. For vertigo, paracetam 1 to 2 grams administered by a healthcare professional as a single dose. Children. By mouth. For breath holding attacks, paracetam 40 mg slash kg daily for 2 to 3 months in children 6 to 36 months of age. For dyslexia, paracetam 3.3 grams daily for at least 12 weeks in children aged 7 to 14 years. Side effects When taken by mouth, paracetam is possibly safe when taken appropriately. Some people who take paracetam have had nausea, vomiting, weight gain, nervousness, and sleep changes. When given by 4, paracetam is possibly safe when given by 4 by a healthcare professional. Uses and effectiveness. Possibly effective for breath holding attacks. Some research shows that taking paracetam for two to three months helps to reduce breath holding spells in young children. Surgery to improve blood flow to the heart, CAB surgery. Most available research shows that giving a single dose of paracetam by injection, for, or by mouth around the time of CAB surgery helps with memory recall after surgery. A learning disorder marked by difficulty reading, dyslexia. Most early research shows that taking paracetam for at least 12 weeks improves some reading skills in children aged 7 to 14 years with dyslexia. Seizure disorder, epilepsy. Most available research shows that taking paracetam reduces some symptoms of epilepsy in some patients who are also taking anti-seizure drugs. But not all research agrees on which symptoms are improved by paracetam. A movement disorder often caused by antipsychotic drugs, tardive dyskinesia. Some research shows that symptoms of tardive dyskinesia improve in some people when paracetam is taken by mouth or given with a needle. Dizziness, vertigo. Some research shows that giving paracetam intravenously, by 4, decreases feelings of dizziness in people with vertigo. Taking paracetam by mouth for one week also seems to be helpful for reducing vertigo symptoms in people with acute vertigo. In people with chronic vertigo, taking paracetam by mouth might reduce the number of vertigo spells. But it doesn't seem to make the spells less severe. Insufficient evidence for 
Alzheimer disease. Early research shows that taking paracetam does not improve mental function in people with Alzheimer disease. Decline in memory and thinking skills that occurs normally with age. Early research shows that taking paracetam three times daily might improve memory loss with aging in some people. Autism. Early research shows that taking paracetam with a medication called risperidone helps improve some symptoms of autism in children. Cocaine use disorder. Early research shows that taking paracetam does not help with cocaine addiction. In some people, it might even increase cocaine use. Dementia. Early research shows that taking paracetam might improve memory loss in some patients with dementia. Down syndrome. Early research shows that taking paracetam does not help children with Down syndrome. In some children, aggression and irritability might increase. Memory. Early research shows that taking paracetam does not improve memory loss in people who have had electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Parkinson disease. Early research shows that taking paracetam does not improve symptoms of Parkinson disease. Recovery after surgery. Early research shows that giving a single dose of paracetam by injection, 4, does not improve memory in people who have had open heart surgery. Schizophrenia. Early research shows that taking paracetam with a medication called haloperidol reduces some symptoms of schizophrenia. But it's not clear if it is beneficial when taken with the newer, more effective drugs used for schizophrenia. Sickle cell disease. Some early research shows that taking paracetam might reduce the severity of symptoms in children with sickle cell disease. However, not all research agrees. Doctors do not recommend paracetam for sickle cell disease. Stroke. Some early research shows that taking paracetam might prevent a second stroke. One study also shows that certain groups of people with a stroke might benefit more from paracetam than others. But overall, paracetam doesn't seem to prevent death improve function, or improve speaking ability following a stroke. In fact, paracetam might increase the risk for death in patients with the most severe symptoms of stroke. Depression. Concussion. Bedwetting. Hearing loss. Other uses. More evidence is needed to rate the effectiveness of paracetam for these uses. Special precautions and warnings. When taken by mouth. Paracetam is possibly safe when taken appropriately. Some people who take paracetam have had nausea, vomiting, weight gain, nervousness, and sleep changes. When given by 4, paracetam is possibly safe when given by 4 by a healthcare professional. Pregnancy and breastfeeding, there isn't enough reliable information to know if paracetam is safe to use when pregnant or breastfeeding. Stay on the safe side and avoid use. Children. Paracetam is possibly safe when taken by mouth under the supervision of a medical professional. Cocaine use disorder. Paracetam seems to increase cocaine use in people who are addicted to cocaine and are trying to quit. Until more is known, do not use paracetam if you have cocaine use disorder. Epilepsy. Stopping paracetam or decreasing the dose of paracetam might increase the number of seizures in people with epilepsy. If you have epilepsy, Use paracetam only under the care of a doctor. Huntington disease, paracetam seems to increase symptoms in people with Huntington disease. Until more is known, do not use paracetam if you have Huntington disease. Kidney problems, paracetam is removed from the body by the kidneys. Talk to a healthcare provider before using paracetam if you have kidney problems. Surgery, paracetam might slow blood clotting. This might result in too much bleeding if it is used before surgery. Stop taking paracetam at least two weeks before surgery. Interactions Major interaction Do not take this combination. Medications that slow blood clotting, anticoagulant, antiplatelet drugs, interacts with paracetam. Paracetam might slow blood clotting. Taking paracetam along with medications that also slow clotting might increase the chances of bruising and bleeding. Some medications that slow blood clotting include aspirin, clopidogrel, plavix, diclofenac, voltaren, cataflim, others, ibuprofen, advil, motorin, others, naproxen, aniprox, naproxen, others, daltepirin, fragmin, enoxaparin, lovinox, heparin, warfarin, coumadin, and others.